the Joe Rogan experience. Crazy. I mean, in retrospect, imagine you were, were we, let's do a little uh, ranking thing here. We have three vices, and I'm, I know exactly uh, where you're going to be going with this, but um, we have three things we want to prioritize. Dope, alcohol, uh, uh, smoking, right? Cigarettes. Cigarettes. You can ban one. Oh, actually, rank them in order. You, we can start from scratch. I'm saying, Joe, we're starting over. Okay. What you say goes. Rank you. We could, so right now, the way we have dealt with these is um, smoking is is becoming the most taboo of those three. Cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, marijuana second. And alcohol is the one that we have the least inhibitions about, right? My argument would be that that list is exactly backwards. That it should be, alcohol should be the most taboo. Uh, marijuana should be, actually, not exactly backwards. It should be alcohol the most taboo, cigarettes the second most, marijuana the third. That's how I would do yeah, it. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, but basically we have it completely upside down. But I think um, for some people, like, look, there's obvious, obviously terrible things that happen to you when you smoke cigarettes. Mm. But every time? No. Is it, is it po- I See, I've smoked a cigarette or two before shows. Like, I've smoked a I mean, I, I mean, or two. I've never smoked two in a row, but I've smoked a cigarette before I've done shows. Like, Dave Chappelle gave me one of his cigarettes recently. Uh, Tony Hinchcliffe's giving me a cigarette. I'm not a cigarette smoker, but there's something cool about the head rush that you get when you smoke a cigarette. I hesitate to say that. And this is a person who's done a lot of drugs. I've done a mm-hmm. lot. I've smoked a lot of pot, and I've done psychedelics, and I talk about them openly. I have hesitation about telling people that I've enjoyed a cigarette Why? because because it's because so I think bad. it's so bad for you. It's it's it's. I think when I talk about doing mushrooms i think mushrooms are good for you i think it makes you freak out i think it 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 illuminates parts of your consciousness that i think a lot of people guard and protect and shield Mm -hmm. and and i think sometimes doing something that breaks down those walls is good for you ultimately overall there's a little bit of an adjustment period Mm -hmm. but i think you learn something about the normal state of consciousness I don't think you learn much when you smoke cigarettes. I just think there's just a little bit of a head rush that you get out of it. But I know so many people that are sick from cigarettes, so many people that can't quit them, so Mm -hmm. many people that have died from cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I personally have known several people that have died from cancer from smoking cigarettes. Yeah. So I hesitate in saying it, but I don't want to be dishonest. I've had them. Yeah, I don't yeah. smoke cigarettes though. I've never bought a pack. I've, that's a cigar. I've smoked cigars. Mm-hmm. I like them sometimes. I just think it's a terrible, it's a terrible thing to get hooked on. Yeah, yeah. And as I would say the same thing with alcohol. Mm-hmm. I, I know people that have had real problems with alcohol that have been alcoholics, and they have to go to the meetings, and you know they're on twelve step programs, and you know I would never offer them a drink. Mm -hmm. But if you said, hey, let's do a shot right now. Let's celebrate. This is a wonderful conversation. Let's have a glass of whiskey. I can have a glass of whiskey and not drink again. It doesn't bother me. I don't don't have that, whatever that is. Yeah. But some people do. Yeah. I hesitate. I hesitate in glorifying that too. Yeah. And for young people, it scares the shit out of me. If I I see, I, I probably drank for the first time when I was probably like, I was in high school. I think it was probably 14 or 15, mm-hmm. first time I ever got drunk with my friends. You know, we yeah. got a hold of some Jack Daniels or something, and it made me throw it's up every time Irish I smelled it. the Irish legal drinking age. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's just friends, you know, <laughs> listening to yeah. classic rock and getting drunk in Boston. But the it's it's something I occasionally enjoy. I, enc- I enjoy alcohol. Mm-hmm. I like having a drink of wine with uh, a glass of wine with a meal. Mm-hmm. I like having uh, a drink with friends occasionally. But I don't have a problem with it, and I know people who do. Mm-hmm. And so I, I feel weird talking about it, knowing those people that do have a problem with it. Yeah, yeah. With pot, though, the people that have a problem with pot, it's rare. And it's usually people that have some sort of an un- – and I do believe there there is an issue with people having some sort of an underlying schizophrenic issue mm-hmm. that could come mm-hmm. from uh, especially high doses. If they smoke a lot of pot in one night, they can have a schizophrenic episode. I've actually seen it, um, mm-hmm. particularly from edibles. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But that's, to me, that's absolutely the least taboo. And I think there's a lot of benefits to pot. I think pot makes you more sociable. I think it makes you friendlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people get paranoid from it, but I think that's re what that really is, is the marijuana illuminating how vulnerable you actually are. Yeah. You know, that we sort of protect ourselves from this overwhelming existential angst that you get when you get high on pot. Yeah. And people say, oh, I don't like it. It makes me paranoid. Well, you know, the reality is, you're vulnerable. We're all very, very, very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And we just somehow or another make it to mm -hmm. like, how old are you? 56. I'm 52. We made it. We made it to Sage somehow or another, despite all the paranoia. <laughs> we got here. <laughs> but we don't have to. I mean, it's like, like really, you know, life is crazy. We're in these metal boxes with combustion engines, you know, like trusting the people next to us going 60 miles an hour, paying attention, not looking at their phone. You know, it's like, it's very, yeah. life, and then we get in planes, and who knows what the fuck's going on with the engine. This guy's flying it over the sky. It's We're very vulnerable all the time. Yeah. There's diseases, and, and then, you know, not to mention, you know, war and all sorts of other things. That could well, we're in LA, not yeah. to mention. Everything. Earthquakes. Fire, yeah. Yeah, Earthquake. fires. Yes. No, my, my thing on this is simply the collateral damage. Yeah. The So... Leave the individual out of it and ask how much social damage is caused by any of those things and, okay. al and alcohol in that case. Number one. Just by, yeah. a, fire, by, a, fire by a bullet. Yeah, you and don't they get, get – You know what's amazing to me is how the people who uh, make alcohol uh, have get a free ride. It's incredible to me mm. that like – if I said to you that I uh, was on the board of Philip Morris, you would say, that's – Malcolm, that's pretty screwed up. Yeah. And you would – you would be you'd have a problem with it. If I said that, oh, I'm, you know, I'm on the board of Anheuser Busch, you probably would hit me up for tickets to the Super Bowl, mm, right? It's yeah. just not the same. Whereas there's no, in terms of the amount of social damage, what Al what Anheuser Busch has created has produced a hundred times the social damage than what Philip Morris has produced. Yeah, right. Like, sure. You know, so it's like it's a, it's. I've always puzzled about. It. I don't know how we got it in our heads, like. To, to to treat one like it's completely taboo, and the other we kind of shrug. You know, the there are a bunch. I was reading about this recently. How many colleges accept not just accept alcohol um, advertising and sponsorship, but you go to a college football game, and you know, Bud Light will have will be an active sponsor of the event. Will have some huge relationship with the school. This is crazy. I mean, it's crazy, right? It's like, it is. this is yeah. the drug that is causing so many problems for young people, particularly yeah. on campuses. Sure. And the schools are hand in glove with the manufacturers of it. Because it's socially acceptable, because yeah. they don't have to worry about repercussions. Because we give it a, we, we give it a, yeah. like, and in a way that they would never have. Marlboro. Marlboro. Right? Yeah. That would no be, way. oh my God, people would pick it. Yeah. Whereas it's not, you know, I don't know. It's That's a, true. It's a strange kind of a. <sighs> we, we're so messy. People are so messy, <coughs> and that is a, that's a, a very good example of how messy we are. <laughs>